No, we don't need no stinking slides. I'm just going to show you. What's that? Nah. Um, I used to have a yardstick that I used would do for that, but it's all right. Okay. Now then, hopefully Sean will be able to see in that sector over there. This sector, I think you guys are out of luck. I don't know. When it gets down to Mr. Burns here, um, Montgomery. All right. Now. All right. Okay. Now, here we go. If, if I have, all right, here's the deal. <laughs> okay. If I have, oh, good. We at least have markers. At least we got that much. All right. Okay, These are, this is resistance R1 and R2. I don't even have freaking markers. All right, um, let's see. R1, there we go, and R2. Okay, are, they, are those in series or in parallel? Parallel. So what does that mean about the voltage going through here and the voltage going through there? They're the same. Very good. The, the voltage will be the same. So if R, all right, so now. Just think about this. You've all heard the story, or you've all maybe even used the phrase, the old, uh, the, the old phrase, path of least resistance. Okay. So let's say this guy is, uh, ha is 10 ohms, and this guy is 20 ohms. Okay. And let's say I've got a voltage here of, oh, um, 30 volts, just for giggles, just for whatever just for a reason for living today. But anyway, all right, now, so a current kicks out, comes bopping out of here, so I get a current that comes bopping out of here. This is I1. Now when it gets here, some of it's gonna go down this way, and then due to the conservation of charge, then some of it's gonna go down this way. So I'm gonna get an I2 coming down here, and I'm gonna get an I3 like coming down here. Which one's gonna be greater, the I1 or the I2 or the I3? All right, for those of you who say I2, why do you say I2? Path of least resistance. More current's going to go through the place that has fewer, less resistance. Okay, because remember, because remember also due to Ohm's law, you got 30 volts equals, because you all told me that each thing through here is 30 volts, right? Each potential here is 30, potential there is 30. 30 volts equals IR. If R is small, I is big. If R is big, I is small, okay? So that's when they're in parallel, okay? That's when they're in parallel. And notice what happens. What would be my total resistance in this, in this circuit? This is actually working out better than the slides, I think, all right? Uh, anyway, so what would be the total resistance? How would we find the total resistance in this circuit then? Dun, 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 dun. They're in parallel. So. Unlike capacitors, capacitors in parallel were real easy. To find the total capacitance, what did you do? You just added them. However, when capacitors were in series, what did you do? Had to take the reciprocal, had to take the one over, and then flip it back, then add that, then flip it over. At the end. Some of you forgot on the exam, forgot to flip it over on the end. I was like, oh, darn. <laughs> Minus three. Anyway, all right, so... Um, I feel bad. No. Um, so in this one, since they're in parallel, 1 over RP would equal 1 over R2, or, or what I say? R1 and R2? R1 plus 1 over R2, which would give me uh, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20, which equals, um, that'd be two over, 3 over 20 which is about 7 <laughs> ohms. It's real close to 7 ohms, right? 20 divided by 3 is about 7 ohms, okay? Because I've got to flip this back over to 20 over, th 20 over 3. Because this came out to be 3 over 20. Because this is 2 over 20, 1 tenth becomes 2 over 20, plus 1 over 20 is 3 over 20, then flip it over, 20 over 3, so you get about 7 ohms. Now, notice what happens when you put things in parallel. When you put things in, and none of this is going to show up on the video whatsoever because the thing's too, but that's all right. 
That's what they get for not coming to lecture. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm in a mood today. Okay, now, uh, so notice what happens when we put things in parallel. The resistance, the total resistance is smaller than the smallest resistance we started with. It's a weird thing. But it helps us ramp up the amperage. The amperage goes up. All right? So let's put these two guys in series and see what happens. All right? Let's, put, let's do the same circuit. Let's do the same circuit like this. Let's do the same circuit here. Except now I'm going to put 10 ohms and 20 ohms over here. All right, so now they're in series. Now, what's the total resistance here? RS is what? Yeah, it's this 10 plus 20, which would be 30 ohms. Which would be 30 ohms. And so, oh, I fin didn't finish my idea on that other one. We'll have to come back to it real quick. But since I got 10 plus 20 is 30 ohms, what's my current? What's I then going through this guy? Yeah, it'd be one. It'd be one amp because, oh yeah, 30 volts. Thank you. Right. There you go. <laughs> I should have said no because it's 20 volts. No, that's, that wouldn't be. That wouldn't be right. That'd be like some of the wording on the multiple choice part of the test. Okay. Um, uh, 30 volts. So anyway, so the, so the resistance, we've got 30 volts equals the total, um, we'd go I times R times in series, and so it's over 30, so I equals 1.0 amps. Now over here, now when we, if we took the total, um, if we took the total, uh, if we wanted to find the amperage, the total amperage flowing through this circuit, we'd have 30 equals um, I, times um, 20 over 3. <laughs> this is fake at 20 over 3. And so I wind up with 90 over 20. So the amperage then is huge. It's uh, something. What, what's 90 over 20? 4.5, something like that? What? It's 4.5? Okay. So my amperage here is 4.5 amps. Notice how much bigger it is. Got a lot more amperage. Amperage is what it takes just for your own practical knowledge. Remember, all science is about becoming a better parent. So when your kids ask you, how does this shaver work or how does this socket work? Oh, put your finger in it. No, uh, you'll find out. No, uh, is, um, it's the amount of amperage. Amperage is what kills you too. Voltage doesn't. It's amperage. All right. And so that's why we put, we wire our houses in, amper in uh, parallel. One reason is if one of these things goes out, like if our toaster blows a fuse, blows that circuit right there, the whole house doesn't shut off. Okay, and it, it, it's got another. It just this this thing will stay on, type thing. Okay, and then the other reason too is we need amperage. We need we need current to flow through there. Jonathan, did you have a question? Just stretch it. Okay, all right. The two fifteen. My God, when's he going to shut up? Stretch. All right, here we go. All right now. Um, so that's, that's the big idea on that. Now, electricians have their own, as what kind of in my area of research, their own ethno-mathematical way um, of solving these kinds of things. But it's only when you have two resistors does it work. That you multiply the top, you multiply these two and divide by the sum. Okay, and then, and then that's the resistance that you get. If you think about it, so if I multiply these two together, I get 10 times 20, which would be 300 div divided by, is that right? Yeah, it's 200. That makes sense. Then 200 divided by the sum, which is 30, gives you the, again, the seven, roughly the seven thing. Okay. All right. So that's the way, but that only works with two resistors, not three, because the real thing for, um, parallel, the, the, the actual formula for them in parallel is equal to the sum, the sum of I equals 1 to N of 
1 over RI. There you go. Y'all ready for a little statistics here? There you go. How many of you have taken statistics before? So you've seen it. How many of you have never seen that summation sign before that way? Okay, you've seen it before. Oh, oh one person. All right. This means we start I equals 1 from 1, 2, however many there are, and you just keep adding them up. 1 over I1 plus 1 over I2 plus 1 over I3, all the way out to 1 over IN. Okay. And good old, good old resistors in, in series are nice and easy. That's just the sum of... I think your book uses this notation on things, so that's why I kind of wanted to throw this at you. So when I do that dirty pool thing, saying, well, read the book. When you're reading the book, you'll actually see this. Okay, so that's resistance in series and resistance in parallel. Now, you're ready to do the problem from chapter 17 with the water heater that we did in class, but because you had to find the total resistance of the thing. All right, so that's good. Now, I'm going to try this one more time. What's the definition of insanity? Trying the same thing over and over that didn't work the first time, right? Do it. I'm going to hit the power button. All right. Let's see if I can hit it. Yeah, I think I can reach it. Where is the power button? Oh, it's the orange one. There it goes. Yes. Yes. Yay, 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 team. All right. I should have done that a long time ago, but this was this actually worked out pretty good. It reminded me of the good old days. All right, now. Okay. So this is coming on. Let's lower the magic screen. I won't go into the whole Winky Dink cartoon thing. Have I told you all about Winky Dink, the cartoon before? I did? Oh yeah, I told the evening class. I was always wound up for the evening class. That's right. All right. Anyway. Okay, all right, we don't need no stinking slideshow. Well, let's take a look at what the, the thing's going to be about. View the show. There you go. There's your textbook you spent $196 for. All right, here's a circuit. We'll be solving circuits like this. In other words, here's, here's, um, here's the deal, okay? got 20 volts. Now the way by, by uh, convention, what we do is we say, okay, this 20 volts is going to pump out a current this way. It's going to hit here. What about this 10 volt facing this way? Which way is it going to want to pump out the current? Yeah, it's going to want to pump it out this way. Okay, so they're going to come this way. So it looks like I'm going to have two currents meet here and this one will go down. There'll be a different current going through here. There'll be a different current going through here as a different current going through here. All right. Now, quick question for you. Well, actually, yeah, the current that leaves here will actually be the same as the one that comes, that's come along this wire here. But we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out how to solve these circuits, okay? First of all, could you be, would you be able to find the total resistance of this entire circuit? <laughs> Saying, yeah, I could, but I don't want to, all right? Because basically it's just 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. That's what? 3 over 2, then flip it over. So it's 2 thirds. Ah, once again, the total resistance of this is less than the smallest resistor. Okay? So that would be 2 thirds. And then we've got plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4. So 2 thirds plus 1 over 5. Ooh, 15, 1 over Ooh. The nearest common multiple is what? 60? On that, yeah, you didn't have to mess with it. Five and four? Didn't I say two over three, two? And three? Ha! See, three doesn't work. Okay, so it's not 20, it's 60. It's 60. But anyway, then you'd add those up and you get the total resistance. All right. But now we're getting it, we're going to get it, what we're going to learn about today. All right, so you've, we've learned these two things. We've learned these two lessons of life. Um, I've prepared lectures for up through here, but we'll finish that on Friday because this bad boy takes a while. So learn Kirchhoff's rules. All right, so we're going to go, I'm going to show you the slides for Kirchhoff's rules real quick. All right, 
first of all, we've already discussed all this. Again, in series, notice the current going through all of these is the same. Okay, when it's in series like that, the current going through each one of those is the same. However, let's say each one of these resistors is exactly the same. Um, and, uh, well, let's say the resistance is, each one of these resistance has a R of 4. The resistance is 4 ohms. This voltage is 12. Okay. <laughs> This voltage is 12. What's my current in the whole circuit then? If 12 equals, the total resistance would be what? 12, right? So it's 12 equals I times 12. So what's I? 1. So I've got a current of 1, and that current stays the same through here, through here, and through here. It, all bets are off on that when I put them in parallel. Okay? Why? Because the resistance drops, and so more current can flow. All right. Okay. Okay. So that. Oh, yeah. There's there's that fancy term right there. It's this. That's one of the problems with math is we get so much shorthand. You have to memorize what the shorthand is. Okay. And here they are in parallel. And notice the. Here's the junction rule right here that we'll talk about here in a minute. Notice the current flowing out of here, the current coming here, now hits this thing, and there's gonna, it's going to split up into three different things. Let's say, just for argument's sake, that R1 is 5, R2 is 15, and R3 is 10. Which one's going to have the most current going through it? R1, R2, or R3? R1, that's the one with the 5, okay? And which one's going to have the least amount of current going through it? R2, because it had the 15, okay? All right. And then R3 will be in the middle between the two. All right. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right. And then there's the thing for when they're in parallel combinations for resistance. All right. Great. We've been talking about that. Ooh. Okay. I think I gave you a homework problem on this. and We've already kind of shortened this down. We've already done this once before. Um, you have a homework problem just like this. Here's my, I think they're saying, hey, we got two batteries. We've got 12, two 12-volt 12 batteries stacked here for a total of 24 volts. Okay. And it's going to send um, a current through there. And we're going to find the total current that's flowing through this um, circuit. Uh, well, we want to find the total resistance in this circuit. Okay, and you just don't go through and go 10 plus 8 is uh, 18 plus, it's not 20 and a half ohms. Doesn't work that way. All right. Um, this is where they're in a combination of series and parallel. So what you do, the way you solve these problems, start with the very back branch, as they call it. Start with the very back branch and work your way in. So you'd figure out the total resistance. Oh, so in this resistance here, I've got 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2, which is the same thing as 3 over 6, so it's 4 over 6, flip it over. So this one is 3 halves, all right, plus the 2 halves. Okay, so I've got 3 halves, which is 1.5 plus 2.5. That adds up to 4. So my total resistance here in the back is 4. Now, the next thing I look at is these two. They're in parallel. So they're 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is 2 over 4. Flip that over, so that gives me a resistance of 2 right here. Or as the electricians would do, hey, just multiply them, divide by the sum. Okay? And so that equals 2. Now, simple series. 6 plus 2, the total resistance is 8. So what's my current? What's my total current that's popping out of here? It's going through there. What would the current be? 3 ohms, exactly. Uh, 3 ohms. 3 what? Amps. Amps. Okay? 3 amps. All right. And, and what is current again? How do you define that? What's it defined as? I know Rachel knows exactly how to define it. What's that? 
V over R equals, okay, well, that's one way, but what is it? That's one way to manipulate the algebra, but what is it? Coulombs over per second, right? That's what it is. How much charge flows through a certain area per second? That's what current is, okay? So if you know the amperage and someone tells you that, hey, this thing is going to be operating for 30 seconds, you should be able to figure out how many electrons went flowing through there in that time. Because you, you get, oh, the th in this case, we found out it's 3 amps equals some Q over 30 seconds. That's how long, it, so you just take that amperage times the seconds, and that gives you the total charge that went through there. Okay? So that'd be 90, ooh, that'd be 90 coulombs. That's a bunch. See, see what I'm saying? Amperage is what kills you, okay? That's like six bolts of lightning flowing through there in 30 seconds, right? Okay, and it's amazing what, how much charge actually flows even through those little calculators because electrons aren't that big. Okay, yes, yes. Oh, that's Kirchhoff's rules. Don't even try that one yet. Okay. We're not there yet. Okay? We're walking right now. We'll run here in about five minutes. All right? Okay. Okay. Ah! This one. This one. And notice what it says. Multi-loop circuits, Kirchhoff's rules. In other words, you can't do this one that simply. This one is much more difficult. All right? So, here's how Kirchhoff's rules work. Let me go through the slideshow. And then I'll put up, I'll actually put up the, uh, okay, here's the deal. Here's Kirchhoff's rules. First of all, you take the junction. And let me show you what a junction is. And the sum of all the currents flowing in there is equal to zero. All right? So, right here would be, didn't mean to shout. Right here's a nice junction. Notice, we've got I1, I2, I3. How many currents are flowing into this junction? One. How many currents are flowing out? Two. And what are the ones flowing out? I3 and I2. So what you say, actually, is the way, I, the way I set it up and the way they teach you to set it up, actually, is what's going in equals what's coming out. Okay? So I1... So if, so if I have my in column of I1 is going in, what would I have in my I going out column? Would it be I2 minus I3, minus I2 minus I3, or I2 plus I3? I2 plus I3. Deal in positive numbers all the time when you're setting up that equation for the most part. Okay? And then I'm going to say all bets are off and tell you no then what we do is we set it all equal to zero. Basically, here's the deal. Here's what we're going to do. We've got two, we've got, well, three loops, actually. We've got one big loop, and then we've got a small, smaller loop here and a smaller loop here. Here's what we do. We'll never take a circuit bigger than two loops. One, I, and the other thing, too, is I've assigned it as a homework problem, and for 220 students, you should only have to do this once in your life and then move on, okay? And so... Um, you'll do it once in your life, and then you'll appreciate, you know, when you're a dentist or a doctor or a physical therapist or whatever, and you got all that diagnostic equipment, all the little bitty circuits that are doing this that you're dealing with, and you'll go, my head hurts, and move on. I'm going to go heal people instead of draw these things. Yes? I thought the long bar indicated a positive Yeah, it does. So why isn't the current I3 going the other way? Oh! I think it's a misprint. Nope, okay. it's not a misprint. It's not a misprint. Okay, first of all, we don't know what these voltages are. Remember, voltage pushes charge. If this voltage, this is good. Ugh, I'm almost excited. This is a good question. Okay, if this is 12 volts and this is 6 volts, which one's pushing harder? So a weird thing that happens is it's going to push current through here and it's going to actually store charge. He's going to turn into a little capacitor. He's not going to lose anything. All right? But he's going to want to try and push this guy this way. Now, if this was 6 volts 
and this was 12 volts, guess what they've done? They've drawn their chart, they've drawn their currents going the wrong way, and, but that's okay. As long as you're consistent when you solve these problems, because what we're going to boil down to is we're going to have three equations with three unknowns. <laughs> okay? But it'll be okay, because I'll show you a quick way to solve it. You go, there's a computer program you can go to, and you just plug in your coefficients. Boom. You get the answer. Now, and if you wind up getting any of your I's, because basically what we're going to solve for is the current, if you get any of your I's are negative, guess what you did? You drew it going the wrong way. That's all. Because current, now this is going out to millions in TV land too. Um, current, and I hope I don't get into trouble here, but basically current is not a vector. It does have direction and it does have magnitude, but it's not a vector. It's a phaser, actually, which is a whole different realm of measuring something. Right? How? Am I right on that? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. He's on his way to do great things in physics so and uh, computer engineering, so he understands these things. This is what they do all day long, is they mess with little circuits like this because the big idea, the big idea with circuits is I've got to control the current going through here so it can do some good work for me. If I don't have any resistors there, what happens? It burns up. Okay, it, that's what is known as when a sh you have a short. Okay, you have a short circuit. That means like all of a sudden I've got uh, some kind of little wire stuck out here that's hung onto something, or that's hooked to some kind of conductor thing. Well, what happens is this thing goes, oh, there's no resistance over here. <laughs> Everything goes through there and burns it up. Okay, that's when you get a short and it goes out. Okay, because there's no resistance. All right, so anyway, so, we'll, so that was a great question. I went around the bend to answer it, but yes, you sure can by convention. Now, you have it going this way. So, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We've got 15 minutes left, or 20. Well, 15, because when that thing hits the 9, I start hearing all this. But, and then I know it's time to let you go. All right. So, uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, let me see if the dot cam is going to work. Of course not. Why would it? Because I want it to. So let's try this one more time. Dot cam. So this thing is just broke. That's basically what you're telling me. That thing is not working. All right, so that does no good. <laughs> All right, maybe I can move this. No, nope, that doesn't do any good. All right. Okay. So anyway, so let's take one of their complicated looking circuits. Oh, here we go. Let's take this guy. Um, oh, gosh dang it. Okay, let's take this guy. Get a good look at him because he's in the book. Now, notice. Notice, what we're going to do is, we're going to do Kirchhoff's rules. One, you take a junction, and all, everything in the junction, what goes in, equals what's coming out. Okay? So you take, and for the circuits we're going to solve, we just have to pick one junction. Well, let's pick this one. So we've got I1 equals I2 plus I3. No biggie. Okay? And then, you look at, you take two loops. And usually what you do is you take these two little loops right here. Okay? Now then. Done. Just based on what we talked about earlier. Notice I've got this 6 volt and this 12 volt. Look how they've drawn these things. Did they draw it correctly? No. They did not. And so we're going to wind up with negative current based on the way they've got this thing drawn. But now here's what you do with the loops. The sum of the voltage in a loop has to be zero. Okay? The sum of the voltage in a loop, has, in other words, when something goes through its loop, it, the voltage equals zero. So what we do, and, and I'll do it, one, I'm going to put it on the FET thing, and then I'm going to solve this thing. I'm going to find out what I1 and I2 and I3 are through this thing. Um, hopefully we can finish it today. But here, 
Okay, this goes from negative to positive. Is that an increase or a decrease? If you go from low, from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill, do you, go, do you gain or lose potential? Gain. So this is a gain. So we go, this is a gain. Now, when this current goes through a resistor, does it gain or lose power? It loses. So what we do is you draw your current over this guy and you go plus minus. So I'm going for plus or minus. So what we have is just like on the loop rule where we had going in equals going out. For loops, we'll set up our two loops and we'll have what um, gains equal drops. And I'll, I'll work all this out. We'll, we'll work it all out um, somehow. So, so that's what we're going to do. All right. And so this would be 6 plus 6. And then this would be I1 times 6 would be on the drop side. Now it comes through here. Oh, I've got an I3. And, but wait a minute. It's going from plus to minus. Would that be a gain or a drop? That's a drop. So we'd put a, a drop on the 12-volt side. And then we've got a current going through here, plus minus, remember, because we, we've drawn the current going this way. And this is plus minus. So therefore, that's a drop too. So that goes on the drop side also. And then it comes down. And then we start over again. Boom. All right. Okay. I think we're ready. All right. So now, there's also another way to solve these things. And I'll show it to you right now. Now, keep that, keep that loop in mind. And we're going to build it. And I'm going to show you what the three currents are. All right. And here's what I like to do. I like to go to this FET thing, this current construction, this construction thing. I'm going to grab a wire. Boom. Put a resistor there. Boom. Grab another wire. Go like that. Oh, can you guys see what I'm doing? Okay. All right. I meant to have this built before you came, but sorry. I know this is probably as fun as an all-night dentist, but watching me do this. Um, this goes down here like this. And then I've got another thing here. And then I think we have a battery in the middle there. Positive to negative going that way. And then we've got a wire. I better stretch this guy out a little bit. Smush him in. And we've got a resistor. And a little bit of wire. There we go. And then we've got this guy. Who's right there. Ooh, got a resistor there. I'm, uh, then I've got to put in all the values here in a minute. Okay, he goes there. There, you're going, well, shoot, I could probably solve this problem as fast as you're building it. Uh, no, you can't. Trust me. <laughs> when we get to it, I'll show you, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I believe you. All right, now, and then there's nothing there, so we can just go like that. Okay, now, let me put in all the resistance. So this resistor should be 9. Change resistance, he should be at 9. Okay, this resistor, done. This resistor should be two. Ugh. Oh boy. Sorry. Two. Done. Done. This resistor, is that the only other res is six? Change resistance. He's at six. Done. And now all I've got to do is change the voltage. The voltage of him was 12. Oh, maybe if I actually put it there. 12, done. And the vo his voltage was 6. He's not helping much, is he? Done. There we go. Now, there's the circuit. Now, what we want to do is we want to find out this current, this current, and this current. Here's how you do it. You go, oh, Non-contact amp meter. Great. Let me put it right here. Oh, that's 0.5 amps. Homework done. Let me put it right here. 1.5 amps. No, this is like all those cool things I show you to just help you with your homework, and then I hammer you on the exam. 1.5 amps. OK. All right. Oh, real quick. What do you think? I like this, because what do you think the current should be right here? Point, 
0.5 amps, right? Should be 0.5. So that's 0.5. Yep, yep, yep. That's correct. And then uh, what about right here? One. All right. Now notice this is coming in. This is coming in. So we've got one and 0.5. What do those add up to? And then what's, what's this one? Kirchhoff's rules, all right? And if you're doing that, you're going, oh, we wanted this to show our work. Okay. You can show your work. Uh, show the equations. Boom, there you go. This is what we're going to be doing. See, notice how they all, all the current things, all, well, all the junctions, they've taken every junction here, ad nauseum, and they all add up to zero, and then they've done 12 equations, 12 unknowns. But we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. I promise. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this very same problem, and I'm going to leave the projector on. I'm going to turn the computer off, and maybe, just maybe, the dock camera will work. It doesn't even want to turn off. Oh, it's not even letting me turn off the... Oh, my gosh. All right. How come it won't let me turn that off? Close. Who? I thought I was in one of those perpetual things. Doc camera. Oh, come on. We need we need the doc camera real bad. Doc camera. Da 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 da. All right. Um, okay. Can't do it. So I can't even turn the thing off now. Uh, but we will. We'll turn it off and we'll get the problem started. What's that? What page is this problem in your book? This problem is on page 635. All right, excuse me, Preet and Muriel. Let me get in here again and turn this thing off now. There. Oh. All right. All right, all right, all right. Now, this is going to be, ah, we'll just do it. This is the old-fashioned way. We can do this. I'm going to draw that circuit real quick. And we're going to go through this in about eight minutes. And um, we'll be done. Okay. All right. Because I think I can draw this thing about that fast. Okay. Here we go. Oh, nice marker. Good. Got a resistance going like that. We got a voltage here and a resistance here. Going like that. And I think we have a resistor over here and a voltage here. Going like that. And he was 12 volts, he was 6 volts. Um, he's six ohms out to two sig figs. He is um, two ohms, and he's what? Nine ohms. Okay. Now we got Kirchhoff's rules. I'm also going to use Don's lemma here, saying, "Hey, she didn't recognize right away. This is 12 volts." then this current I3 is going like this. I'm going to say I3 is going like that. So what I do is I put a plus minus here and have I3 going like this, right there. So I3 is going to be going into that junction and it'll be coming across this guy this way. Um, since this does have current pushing up this way, I'm going to say that I2 is going like this. I'll say that I2 is coming up like that. And I'm also going to say that I1 is coming up, is going up here like this. But he's, so that means he'll also be going across here like this. So everywhere I've got a current in the direction of the arrow, I go, OK, that's a drop. So it goes plus, minus. Now this is minus, plus. This is minus, plus, And this would be plus, minus. All right. So here's what we do. We take this loop one. Here's my first loop. 
And here's my second loop. Okay? First loop, loop one, and loop two. And we're going to, we always start with this junction. So here's what I'm going to do. At this junction, I've got, I've got coming in equals going out. That's what I do for the junction. Okay? So what's coming in is I3 equals I2 plus I1, or I1 plus I2. Okay, now, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to write, because I want to, because what I'm getting down to, I've, I've, I've three-fourths the way through constructing my first equation. Okay? And, and I want it, for three equations and three unknowns, I want I1, I2, I3 equals something. Okay? So, yes? <coughs> yeah? Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. I two's going in, I one's coming out. Yes. That is that is good. I think I've drawn I two going the wrong way, personally. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's go ahead and change that because you guys are doing some good analysis here. Let's go ahead and change him, make him come this way. So, I'm going to go back. <laughs> We're going to go back to what we had originally. But it was wrong originally, now it's right because of the way we've drawn this. Good. Okay, so, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. That's my equation, okay? And there's a method to my madness why I do it this way. It's so that, and I can also show you how to do this on a TI-83 or 84. Do, have you all ever done that? Three equations, three unknowns, use the matrices on your TI-83, 84? You, you can do it, you can do it that way. All right, I might bring in a TI-83 and show you how to do that, or 84. If I go spend my, uh-oh, ruh -ru -ru all I'm going to have time to do is set up the equations. All right, so now, let's look at loop one. This is loop one. Loop one, I've got, um, what I say about, what I say about the loop? Drops, okay, gains equal drops. All right, and you can start anywhere on the loop that you want, but by convention, by, I usually start with the battery. I find a battery or a voltage on there, and I go, okay, so I go from minus to plus, so that's a gain of six volts. Okay, and then as it's coming through, uh-oh, Look what happens here. I2 is actually coming this way. I've got a gain here because I go, f you, 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 follow, you follow the I, and so if this was a gain, then this is going, uh, this is going to be a gain also. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It is. It's going to be a gain. Yeah, this is going to be a gain, too, of uh, 6 times I2. Remember, voltage equals I, ti I times V, so, or IR. Voltage equals IR. Did I say it was a gain? I did. That's what I get for getting in a hurry. 6 times I2. Okay? And now then we're still coming through the loop. What happens here? Got uh, so as we're going this way through the loop, we got plus, minus, what happened there? Drop, 12. Okay. And then what happens here? As I go from, oh, but the current's flowing. I've got the uh, current actually coming this way. So that would be a gain of 2I3. All right, now what I do is, here's what I do. I set up 0 plus I1, or, God damn it. All right, 0 I1 plus 6 I2 plus 2 I3 equals 12 minus 6, 
which equals 6. There's my second equation. All right. Now, go to my third equation. Okay? I'm going to go to my third, third equation where I'm going to start with this loop. So I'm going to go minus to plus, and that's a gain of 12. So this was loop one. Now we'll finish with loop two. Uh-oh. All right. We'll start with loop two when we come back on Wednesday. Believe it or not, section 18.2 takes like two and a half times longer than all the rest of them combined. So we'll get through with the chapter. <laughs>